Hey ladies and gentlemen, Wolf Cryer here and welcome to another build guide for the Solo Monk in patch 2.6.1 season 12 in Diablo 3. Now this build guide is for the Sun Wuko's Lashing Tail Kick build. A very, very strong build indeed and I do have to give some thanks to Tagora Gaming. Make sure you go check out his Twitch channel, Tagora Gaming. He enlightened me on this version of the Sun Wuko's Lashing Tail Kick build, and it is much more reliable than the version I was testing on the PTR, so I do think that this build can reach a 105 plus GR, which is pretty beast indeed, and I think that it does hold its own with the top builds. Now most likely Wave of Light will pull ahead, mainly because of the damage mitigation involved in this build. It is a very, very squishy build, and it's an in-your-face type of monk playstyle, where you have to be right on top of the mobs in order to deal your damage. Unlike Wave of Light, which can stand back, fire off its stuff, and hopefully mitigate some of the damage that way. But this build, pretty squishy, but I think it deals enough damage to get up there and be one of the best builds for the solo monk. All right, so first up for the stats for this build, what you're pretty much looking for is some life on hit, area damage, those are pretty key with the way you want to run this build, as well as critical hit chance, crit damage, and of course, dexterity, vitality, and secondary resistances, if possible, on your gear. The life per hit is definitely going to be helpful, as is the area damage, because this build does a ton of damage. And you want to use that area damage to knock down the elite packs, especially those blue packs, because that is what is going to progress the rift for you. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the gear. First up, you are going to be utilizing the six-piece Sun Wuko's Monkey King's Garb set. Now for the two-piece set bonus, your damage taken while Sweeping Wind is active is reduced by 50%, and Sweeping Wind will be active at all times. Obviously, there might be some times when you're running where you have to refresh this, but for the most part, you are constantly attacking, which is going to keep your Sweeping Wind up. And for the six-piece set bonus, each stack of your Sweeping Wind increases your Lashing Tail Kick damage, Wave of Light damage, and Tempest Rush damage by 1,000%. And you can get up to 10 stacks, so that is a 10,000% damage boost to your Lashing Tail Kick. You will achieve this set bonus by wearing the shoulders, the gloves, chest piece, pants, and the amulet. And you will also wear the Royal Ring of Grandeur in your cube, which is going to allow you to wear those five pieces and get that six-piece set bonus. Now, another set that you are going to be running is your Focus and Restraint, the Bastion of Will set. And this is going to increase your damage by 50% whenever you attack with a generator and another 50% every time you attack with a spirit spinner. So your generator is going to increase your damage and your lashing tail kick is going to increase your damage. Very, very powerful set for this build. Now you will also be running Guyana Na Kashu, the helm that increases your lashing tail kick damage as well as launching that powerful fireball ahead of you each time you lashing tail kick. This piece of gear is very important to this build because you definitely want the increased lashing tail kick damage as well as that fireball does a decent amount of damage itself. Another very important piece of gear is your Rivera Dancers, the boots that increases lashing tail kicks attack speed by 50% and its damage by up to 300%. Very, very important to this build. Lashing Tail Kick does a massive amount of damage when combined with these items. Now, for the belt slot, I use the Witching Hour. Now, you can use Kayashiro Soul, but for the most part, Kayashiro Soul is pretty useless. They kind of need to revamp the whole belt because you do not lose stacks anymore when you are attacking with your Wave of Light, Tempest Rush, Lashing Tail Kick. So those stacks never disappear. And as long as you are hitting stuff, you are not losing those stacks. 
So while you're running from mob to mob, maybe then you'll have to refresh your sweeping wind, but for the most part, you keep your stacks throughout the rift, which is why Witching Hour is a pretty big damage boost and very important with this build. You could use something like Vigilante Belt for the cooldown reduction or String of Ears if you really, really need some more damage reduction, but I think that becomes quite redundant with the amount of damage mitigation pieces that we use in this build. Next up, very important, is Spirit Guards. This is going to be one of your main damage mitigators. And this is actually one of the older versions. The newer versions give you up to 60% damage mitigation. And you definitely want as close to 60% as possible. Now on these, you're looking for fire skill damage, critical hit chance, dex, and most likely vite, or maybe some life on hit but i'd go with vitality instead and this is definitely going to add you a ton of damage mitigation now for your weapons i use scarbringer and scarbringer increases your lashing tail to kick damage to the first seven enemies hit by up to 600 percent now this is one of those items that was buffed in patch 2.6.1 making this a very very monstrous damage boost indeed this is a very important part of this build scarbringer is an absolute necessity with this as is your vengeful wind which i currently have cubed you, you can cube any of these weapons and wear the other two because they are all fist weapons <laughs> vengeful wind is going to increase your maximum stack count of your sweeping wind by up to seven which is going to give you that 10 stack bonus giving you that 10 thousand percent damage bonus from your Sun Woko set and for the last weapon I use crystal fist crystal fist dashing strike reduces your damage taken by up to 50 percent for six seconds now if you are not having that big of a problem mitigating your damage you can perfectly change this out for rabid strike and increase your damage substantially i've tested both unfortunately i think with rabid strike it is extremely squishy but currently on the live server i do not have a 60 percent spirit guard so that might help with the damage mitigation and then maybe you wouldn't need the crystal fist on the PTR, I was testing it with uh, Rabid Strike instead, and I was able to clear a 92 GR with no augments whatsoever and unoptimized gear. I think Rabid Strike deals more damage, but Crystal Fist will keep you alive. And for your armor slot in the cube, we are using Lefebvre's. Lefebvre's. Whatever. We're using the shoulders that mitigates your damage by 50 percent the damage mitigation is very very useful now you can maybe change out your cyclone strike for a blinding flash instead and use laws of Seth or something along those lines but unfortunately with the squishiness of this build I do find Lefebvre's and cyclone strike very very necessary I will however keep testing and you guys in the comment section below let me know if you have any other thoughts on this matter, but Lefebvre's really, really helps you stay alive with the Crystal Fist and the Spirit Guards, especially since you don't run Unity or String of Ears, so you're gonna need some damage mitigation. Now, for your gems with this build, I use Bane of the Trapped. Obviously, this is probably a gem that is used in all builds when it comes to greater rift pushing. You gain a certain percentage of damage to everything affected by a control impairing effect and that comes that control impairing effect which sets off that damage boost at all times. So very very important gem. The, the next gem I use is Esoteric Alteration. Now this gem is a great damage mitigator especially against that elemental damage. And for the last gem, we use Bane of the Stricken. Very important when killing Rift Guardians, especially in higher tier GRs. This is going to allow your damage to increase with every single attack. So very, very important when pushing GRs to have this Bane of the Stricken on most classes. Most builds will use Bane of the Stricken.
So there we have the legendary gems. The other gems in your gear, I would use diamonds in your chest and leg piece. And obviously you're going to want emeralds in your weapons. And depending on how you build, I would go with the topaz in your helm for reduced resource cost reduction. Or maybe a diamond for some cooldown, especially if you are running the Rabid Strike version. Because you want your epiphany up more often so that you can deal that double damage that rabbit strike offers now let's go ahead and take a look at the skills and break it down first up we have epiphany desert shroud this is going to allow you to gain your spirit back faster as well as offering 50 percent damage mitigation and if you are using rabbit strike this is going to be the skill that triggers your clone dealing its damage so very important skill to have. Epiphany also allows us to navigate through the rift by clicking on mobs when your dashing strike is down. So very useful skill to have on most monk builds. Next up we have dashing strike, blinding speed. This is going to be another great damage mitigator because it gives you 40% increased dodge chance and it allows you to navigate in and out of sticky situations as well as through the rift then we use cyclone strike implosion this is going to group the enemies neatly for you while also triggering the damage mitigation from your lefebvre's in the cube so very useful skill to have the only drawback is the spirit cost of your cyclone strike is going to limit the amount of times you can lashing tail kick afterwards now you will be using a generator to get most of your spirit back and you won't be using blinding flash or anything like that so very very important to remember not to cyclone strike too much you want to group the enemies get your spirit up start casting off those lashing tail kicks kill everything around you rinse and repeat but I would definitely use this to keep the damage mitigation boost up and group the enemies for you. Just don't go spamming it during the rift. Then we're using Sweeping Wind Inner Storm. Sweeping Wind must be active at all times for you to deal your damage. Make sure that your Sweeping Wind is active. Plus, it itself gives you that 50% damage mitigation bonus from your 6-piece Sun Wuko set. And... By using Inner Storm, we gain Spirit back. So very useful to go with Inner Storm instead of any of the others because its damage is pretty negligible. Even with the 4-piece set bonus on your Sun Moko set, you don't really notice the damage. So Spirit trumps everything when it comes to this skill. Then for your generator, we are using Crippling Wave Tsunami. Just like a ZDPS Monk, that third hit is going to create a swirling circle and hit multiple enemies up to 17 yards away, which is going to refresh your spirit faster. That's why I've gone with Crippling Wave Tsunami. It's just for the spirit regeneration. You could go with Assimilation or something else if you'd prefer. And for your last skill is Lashing Tail Kick, Vulture Claw Kick. Now this is your main source of damage. And you will release a torrent of fire that burns enemies within 10 yards for 755% weapon damage as fire and an additional 230% over 3 seconds. Now this, like I said, is your main slash only source of damage with this build. Very important to keep your focus and restraint buff up by hitting with your generator and then switching over to Lashing Tail Kick. So your generator is doing multiple things for you and that is replenishing your spirit, triggering the damage mitigation from your spirit guards, and activating your focus and restraint portion so that when you switch over to Lashing Tail Kick, you just deal a ton of damage. Now let's talk about the passives. First up I use Exalted Soul. This is going to increase your maximum spirit by 50 and increase your spirit regeneration by 4 per second. Very useful keeping that spirit up. I have tried other things such as Seize the Initiative. That can be useful but I do think that the spirit regeneration is very very useful. 
Next up I use Guardian's Path. This is going to allow you to gain 35% additional chance to dodge because you are dual wielding. You could actually use Resolve or Near Death Experience if you choose, but I like Guardian's Path. Next up is Beacon of Yitar. Now this grants you 20% cooldown reduction and that is very useful at keeping your epiphany up as well as giving you those dashing strike charges back a little bit faster. So Beacon of Yitar is pretty good to have. And last but not least we are using Harmony. 40% of your single elemental resistances gets put towards your all resistance. So that's why it's very important to have secondary resistance on all of your gear or at least as much as you can. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have my Sun Wuko's Lashing Tail Kick Greater Rift Pushing Build for Season 12 in Diablo 3. I personally cannot wait to keep testing this build to see how far it could actually go because I do think it can rival Uliana's at least and most likely it can come close to what Wave of Light can do. The only problem like I said is the fact that it is just ridiculously squishy so once that part is figured out the damage is not a problem. This build does a ton of damage and like I said don't know this could rival Wave of Light. Guys, let me know in the comment section below if you have any changes that I can test out or anything like that, as well as what you think of this build guide and that sort of thing. Guys, thank you so very much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I greatly appreciate it. And hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and you guys have a fantastic day. Peace.